So welcome to the Tri-City Medical Town Hall. Now, we have a really, I suppose it was expected, but sort of a very, very, very sad event that occurred today. And of course, I'm speaking about the death of Senator Ted Kennedy, who was literally the lion in the Senate for the poor, for civil rights, for education, for health care, for all the different things that really mean so much to us. So I'd like us, if we could, to just take a moment of silence to remember Senator Ted Kennedy. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. introduce our panel, uh, I'd like to say thank you again very much, everyone, for coming. I'd also like to thank our Mayor, Annie Mickens, for being willing to grace us at this event. Thank you so very much. And um, let's go ahead and let's get started. We're here tonight to talk about health care, and we're going to be talking about health care reform, possibly from a rather unique perspective. Normally when we hear about healthcare reform on television, we hear the people in politics, our elected officials, talking about healthcare reform. Well, tonight in this particular venue, we're going to talk about healthcare reform from the standpoint of we have a person here who will be a consumer or is a consumer of healthcare, as all of us are. And then we also are going to get the perspective of the people who deliver health care. What a unique concept, having the medical professionals actually tell us what they believe their idea of health care should be. And our evening could not possibly be complete if we did not look at the bills that are currently being considered in the House of Representatives, which will probably be one of the very first votes that will occur in September. Now, for those who care to take a look, I do have the entire 1,017 printed pages of H.R. 3200 available in the back of the room. And then I also have another bill, H.R. 676. So after the patients and the doctors get done, then I will spend a little bit of time talking about the bills and then opening it up and then letting you folks ask all of your questions because I know people must have lots and lots of questions about what on earth is going on in healthcare. It is a constantly moving, ever-changing picture, almost on a daily basis, something different is going on. Now, on our panel, we have Cynthia Lobson, who will be talking about health care from the perspective of a patient. And then we have Dr. Lurla Joseph, who is currently a practicing physician. And we also have Dr. Steve Vaughn, who is also a practicing physician. So I would like you to please give our panel a hand. Thank you. And hopefully anyone who has a question has had an opportunity to get a card and then you can write your question down on a card. So we do have people who will be more than happy to collect the cards and then bring them up front so we can make certain that we get everybody's questions answered. All right, um, Cynthia Lewis. I may have to refer to the notes. I just got back from London last night. 
and so I'm a little bit jet lagged to say the least. But anyway, today was also my first day back as a teacher. Um, and I teach at the Maggie Walker Governor's School, of which I'm very proud. Um, for four years, Newsweek has listed us as between 16 and 20 of the most prestigious public schools in the entire nation. They have a top 100, more about that. Um, last year, well, actually, my husband says my warranty ran out when I turned 48. I um, had surgery for the first time. I had gallbladder complications, gallbladder, and uh, followed by complications. We used another surgery. A month later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, to say that my world was turned upside down is, is not saying enough. Um, and well, let me start with this. I guess we think about healthcare and we think about well, the costs and things, but, oh, I'm sorry, I am a bit shit like, I want to be a good teacher. I take pride in my job, and you can tell I love my school and I love my children. I call them my children. And last year, I found myself apologizing to my students. I said, I, don't, I know that I'm not giving you what I should be giving you. But the fact is that when I get near a doctor's appointment, I get scared. And... It also makes me tired. I finished treatment mid September last year. So it was a lumpectomy, followed by chemotherapy, and followed by radiation. It was a lot. And throughout the whole thing, I've had to fight my insurance company. But anyway, to continue my story with my students, I said, I said, sometimes it's so hard for me to come into work because often I would rather be curled up in a ball in my husband's arms. But instead of doing that, I come here, and it's the most courageous thing I have ever done in my entire life. Um, the thing about this from the perspective of your own children and grandchildren, I am tied to my job. Fortunately, I love my job, and I cared that I wasn't doing the quality of work that I knew I could be doing if I were healthy. But I am tied to it because I now have this pretty distinct condition. Do you really want someone teaching your children who doesn't want to be there? So this isn't just impacting me. And yes, I worked, before I went back to college, I was working three jobs, which made me decide to go back to college. Um, because I, so I am a hard worker, I can do that. But I do feel like my students deserve the best. And I do feel that as hard as I tried, I wasn't able to give it to them. But I also felt it was important to tell them the reality and explain why. You see this lovely thing I have in my arm? I'll stand up so you can see. Although they found no cancer in my lymph nodes, they were unable to find a sentinel and took them all out anyway, which means that I have to live for the rest of my life with the possibility of this arm swelling up and even possibly turning to cellulitis and killing me. My insurance company was happy to pay for the 400 and, for over $400 one. But they, I found this one for 100 They didn't want to pay for it. Uh, it took several phone calls to Anthem. And finally, as a teacher, I love technology. I went down to Anthem with one of these little things, their flip video camera. And I said, I am not leaving. By the way, you walk up to a counter, and it's a woman looking down at you. And being 5'2", I, I feel like I've been sent to the principal's office. So again, it's, it's about this loss of dignity. It's a loss of my humanity. As if all the pricks and prods of the doctors and nurses, you know, that, if that wasn't enough. And so the second time I went down there, uh, they gave me a mug response the first time. I said, I am not leaving here until you send someone down here and talk, that will talk to me face to face. And they did. And I asked, with her permission, I videotaped it. They have since not allowed me to videotape it, but I still audio tape it. And by the way, when I was in Kennedy Airport on my way to London, I gave a little phone call to Anthony just to know I was still, you know, interested and concerned. I used to have to wait 30 to 45 minutes for someone to pick up, but now it takes no more than 10. They must have a red flag somewhere for me. <laughs> but um, anyway, another part of my history is there was a family history, so they probably should have been doing more tests to begin with. My mother's sister, who is still with us thankfully, was diagnosed at my age, which was 49 with breast cancer, with um, 